Um, I'm Chris from Data Minded, uh, Skylane from Deloitte, and together we prepared like a small demo on how, how what, what can we do to help fight climate change. It's going to be a bit more down to earth than down to earth than the previous presentations. Hope you're still gonna like it. Um, who knows what this is? It's not a difficult question, you guys. You're smart. <laughs> so this is planet Earth. What is something special about this visualization? Because they put the North Pole in the middle. And actually, what you see on, on, on the outskirts, that's all the South Pole. This is actually the view of the Earth according to flat earthers. Yes, so people who think that the world is flat, it's a disk, it's not a sphere. So there are people today in 2015 that think that the world is flat. And those people are basically a lost cause for science. For all the rest, I think there is hope. Um, I think a, lo a lot of the other people can be educated in what science brings us, but it takes a while. It's not easy for a scientist to, to find something out in his lab, be, and then it, it has to trickle down to the citizens, right? So th there is a gap to be filled between w w what a data science comes up with and, and w what's in the mind of the, of, the, of the common people or the citizens. Um, there can be a lot of crazy stuff in there, so I think <laughs> What we as data scientists can add to this discussion, uh, where you can call yourself whatever you want, data scientist, data engineer, some people even call themselves data architects, it's crazy. Uh, anyway, we, what we can do is, is make sure like these crazy ideas, they go away in, in, in the normal people's heads. And there are three ways we think um, uh, we can help. Uh, very simply, I think, one thing we can do is we can offer data scientists some proper data management. I, I'm not going to out-science a data scientist, but I, I do know a bit about data management, so I, I think I can help them there. Uh, we can offer both scientists and citizens tools to do some, some decent data exploration, uh, which helps a lot. Uh, and then the, the last step we can do is about raising awareness, and it's more to, towards the citizens to, to make sure that wh whatever we, we know to be true, that we communicate that to the citizens. Actually, Marta, Marta gave an ex excellent example of, of doing just that. Um, so let me begin with, with um, data management. Um, I, I went to a university, I shall not name it, uh, talked to a research group, and I asked, there are lots of sensor data, and I asked, like, how do you manage that? <coughs> and this was their answer. <laughs> they just have a USB drive, and they pass it around in the, U in, in the research institute. I do not need to go through all the details of why this is bad, right? I, I think you know why this is bad. Uh, so basically, it, it's our job, it could be our job to make their lives easier. Um, but l let's make it so. And, and we all know a lot of technologies. And one way of doing it is, is that you, you just throw it all out to them. And then you give them like a wall of options. They go like, fuck, Chris, you didn't make my life easier. Now, now I really don't know what to do anymore. These are all these all these fancy new big data technologies or small data technologies that, that can help somebody in the end, but in the end, you, you're not helping someone if you're just throwing it out there. Um, so, so they get kind of nervous if they see this. I mean, I always say, don't panic. We're here to help. Um, I think you, you have to give them some choices, right? Just don't throw them all the <laughs> options out there. Um, what kind of choices you make really depends on, 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 on what kind of research group or what kind of client you're dealing with. But you can start drawing ideas on the board, something like this. Definitely don't have time to go through all the buzzwords here. Um, but there's one, one uh, technology that I like to uh, highlight here. It's, it's called Apache NiFi. It's, it's all down in the beginning. It, it's, it's in the ingestion phase. And I like to compare um, Apache NiFi a bit with uh, C3PO. So C3PO, you know probably, it's, um, it's a protocol droid. It uh, is fluent in over six million forms of communication. And it looks a bit weird. But I have the same feeling with NiFi. So I, from the other presentations I heard tonight is that they had a lot of effort doing just data ingestion. And it's a big problem to solve. The tools that are out there today are, well, not perfect. NiFi is definitely not perfect either, but it's, it's, it's a big step in the right direction. It puts all your security in one place. It, it puts all your management of data ingestion in one place. It, you see data lineage, you can do throttling. It's, it, it's super cool. So definitely, if, if you're dealing with um, a source where you have to, a system where you do, need to do a lot of data ingestion, I think, I think NiFi is, is definitely one of these tools that can be very useful for you. Um, so next step is data exploration. 
So th that is given that you've managed your data correctly, how can you give it back to the scientists to do some data exploration? And then of course the computer <coughs> crashes, so that's probably time for a demo. And demo is the only time that thing that can go wrong in this presentation, so I leave that up to somebody yeah. smarter than I am. <laughs> this guy Lane will do yeah. the demo. Thank you, Chris. Um, well, basically, it's uh, still going back to some of the keywords that you saw on the screen before, and those keywords were Elasticsearch and Kibana. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just going to start um, <coughs> Elasticsearch um, and just show you more or less how it works. I don't know how many people have worked already with it, but it, it should be quite easy to start it. So you see now it's starting up. Um, all the info might scare you at first, but it just, it's <coughs> normal. When this has finally reached uh, state where you see the cluster state and you see that there are uh, two indices. Uh, you can start up Kibana, which is basically uh, your plugin to visualize the data that you ha that you will put into Elasticsearch. Might take a while, but you see that it's quite fast. So what I have already done before was just uh, together with Chris, I made use of uh, some Python script to load in the data into Elasticsearch. So the data is already there. What I'm going to show you now is just how you can play around with it uh, in Kibana. By the way, the data that we used is uh, CO2 data measurements from NASA. Um, so yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see how, because the two main questions that climate scientists have right now are like how, what is the correlation between CO2 and the coordinates on Earth? Where is the CO2, uh, where are the high concentrations of CO2 located? And secondly, uh, what can we do with it, you know, like uh, how, how can we solve it? Now for the second question, I'm not sure if we will find an answer, but Kibana might already be a starting point. Who knew that this worked? If you go to zero, 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 then you go to local host. It's completely new to me like that. <laughs> I always find all the hacks, so. Uh. Our data starts from 2009, so I'm just going to uh, fill in. It's five years of data. So what you need to do first is make sure that that there on top is set right. Otherwise, it won't show you any data. And it will go to uh, Elasticsearch and search through all of your documents that you have put there. Uh, and it will basically show you this. Uh, so you see all the concentrations. Uh, indeed, it starts at 2009 and it goes to 2013. Now we are in the Discover tab, so it's very easy to just discover your data, see what, what is there. There is a part truncated here, but normally you can also have, uh, you can also select some types, like for example, CO2 or temperature or the date. Um, but once you have actually explored your data, you can start visualizing. I won't take up too much of your time, so I have already prepared some um, visualizations. Uh, let's see if it actually shows. Okay, so you see even it's just like five years of data, which is not crazy a lot. It's hard for one laptop to do. The cool thing about Elasticsearch is that you just run it on the cluster and it runs as well. So yeah, what we've done here, what I've done here is just make a heat map and you see that there are large concentrations in uh, North America and also in Asia. Of course, if you play around, you can change the image, which of course will affect your interpretation, but 
the data is there, it sh still shows a story. Um, and well, it's basically, it can basically answer your question or it can answer the climate scientists uh, a question of where is the CO2 located. If you want to see, uh, for example, if you want to make a bubble sh chart uh, and see where, uh, for example, what, what the correlation is between the altitude of your observations with the CO2 over time, you will come up with something like this, which at first doesn't really tell you much. I mean, it's just, it just seems like a scatter plot, but of course, if you play around with the options, you can show the connecting lines, play it again, and you can actually see some seasonal effect. Right now, the image is a bit weird, but if you have it much smaller, you can actually see that it goes up and down and that the peaks are actually in winter. So when you go across here, you see that at December 1st, there was a sum of CO2 of 19. Of course, I don't know why this is. I'm not a climate scientist, but I can help actually to bring across a message like, hey, the data is saying this and um, to actually <coughs> transfer this message, I can create a dashboard. I can just really quickly select a visualization and Kibana just does the rest for you. It brings it there. Of course, it takes a while, but it's still much more <laughs> faster than any other thing that I have been working with at least. Maybe you guys have a lot more experience, but for me, this was quite handy. Um, and of course, I also wanted to add this. If you actually want to go and play around yourself with the data, uh, the function, the Python code is all there. You see it here. <coughs> and that is where Chris comes in to finish his story about how data scientists can help climate. All right, thanks a lot for that. Um, I can get my presentation back. Yeah, so indeed you can, this is some simple Python code. Um, I, I think the, the cool thing here is that if, if you look at, at raw NASA sources, they're all like super smart, so it took me like two days to figure out what they were even storing in the data. Um, but, but then if, if, if you take the effort to, to do the translation once, I mean, something like Elasticsearch is something that, that, that I can understand. Um, and it, it makes data a lot more accessible, even for the, for the, for the scientists themselves, because imagine they have their two terabyte drive again and they need to read 20,000 of these NASA files. That nobody's waiting for that, right? Well, well if, if you offer them something, something a bit more convenient, um, I, they can focus on their work. And this is something we we are developing now, um, uh, more in prototype stage. But ho hopefully, I can I can share some news sooner. It would be cool if we, if we can actually build a, some products out, out of there that can actually really help academics with with their work. Um, yeah. So last but not least, I'll, I'll keep this point short. Raising awareness. So one of the three things that I think all of us here can do is, is raising aware awareness to the public. A few examples there is, is what, what Mark is just showing is, is, is a very good example. It's really cool that we have somebody like him here in Belgium. Um, uh, th something like this, this is even something my mother can understand, right? This is, yes, it's, 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 it's getting warmer. I see that. Plus, he makes it cool as well. So even like the, the young people like to play around with it. It's super, super valuable to just make the data very clear, very transparent. There are a few other examples, like this is from Bloomberg, I think. The New York Times does awesome visualizations as well. I can recommend every one of you to learn D3 because it's definitely worth it. It's, it's, it's the future of, of visualization on the web, I think. Uh, so, so let me recap. I, I think, yes, we can help fight climate change. We cannot solve it. But we can at least offer some data management tools to um, the scientists. We can help them with data exploration as well, and we can raise awareness to the public so um, they don't have too many crazy ideas in their head, hopefully. Uh, that's it. Um, again, my name is Chris from Data Minded. Obviously, we're hiring. And I didn't check this, but Deloitte is always hiring. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, they're hiring as well. Um, that will cost you a beer as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. We have time for two questions. One for Chris and one for Katan. Questions? So let me show you. Um, at what point do we decide to use things like Kibana to work with data analytics search? And at what point do you would use regular tools for, like I use? Yeah, so it's a good question and it's very hard to give a specific answer. But in general, if, if the cost of moving everything to Elasticsearch is, is lower um, than the cost of managing it yourself, then you would move it. It's, it's a difficult trade-off. Like if, if you have a two, two of these, like if you have one CSV file, then don't bother. But, but if, if you have like 20,000 of these NASA files, it helps. Yeah. And speaking in, in size, the data size? So, um, right now it was 50 gigabytes of data that I loaded in, yeah. so it was quite an amount. Yeah. But Elasticsearch works fine on, on small data, so if you have a lot of data variety, they can work as well. Obviously, if, if, if you have data that doesn't fit in your memory and you're just having problems processing it, then it makes sense to just throw it all in, in Elasticsearch or, or in anything else. Right? There's, there's many other tools available. But I, I like Elasticsearch a lot. <laughs> For your, if you are interested in Elasticsearch, we are in April, I think, we are doing hands-on evenings on Elasticsearch starting from an open data set and ending up in Kibana. So uh, cool. check out the agenda. The, the, these things come up and, and disappear as, as fast as they came up. <laughs> so thank you. Are we, can we round this up? Oh, yes, Frank. One question from Frank. <laughs> I really like also Kibana and, uh, and all these frameworks. So, uh, but I don't like too much Elasticsearch. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> Uh, so just to say that actually Elasticsearch is quite nice if you have the whole infrastructure to run it. It runs on several PCs, all the stuff and well bells and whistles. Uh, thing is that most people run Kibana uh, on a website, and if you want to run it on a website, you 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 want to run it actually on OVH, you know OVH or some kind of st uh, structure like that. And on this kind of structure, it's difficult to deploy Elasticsearch. So uh, we are currently in the process, it will be finished in uh, something like two or three weeks, uh, to do a clone of Elasticsearch that actually runs into a smaller infrastructure, like OVH. Uh, so it will be available for uh, mostly free, I guess. We'll never <laughs> didn't, didn't decide the price, but it, I think it will make it available for all you guys for free. Uh, and it will run basically on every standard infrastructure like a LAMP stack or a, a WAMP stack. So it should be actually really nice to be able to deploy all these fancy stuff that you have presented here anywhere in the world because these LAMP stack and WAMP stack are actually available everywhere in the world. So, great news. <laughs> so, uh, let's round this up and let's agree with, uh, let's give a warm applause to all the presenters. Hey, I hope you liked this presentation. This presentation was held in the Brussels Data Science Community Meetup. If you want to know more of when these meetups are taking place, just check the link below. Bye-bye.